Hi everyone, my name is Phil and welcome to Phil Does 3D. I'm a multimedia and 3D artist and I stream live on Twitch on Mondays and Tuesdays at 5pm Pacific Time in the United States, which is 10am in Australia or 1am in the UK. Now remember, if you do miss the live streams, you can catch up with the premier event streams on a Friday and Saturday at 2pm Pacific Time in the United States, 7am in Australia or 10pm in the UK. Galen, good to see you, Galen. How are you, buddy? Did you have a good weekend? Have a good week? How's things? What you been up to? What you doing? You still working on that spaceship? Yeah, for anyone that doesn't know, Galen is also a streamer on Twitch. Uh, he uses Blender and he's been working on one of the spaceships from the Alien movies. It's good to see you, Galen. Um, we are going to continue working on our Art Deco building. Uh, Galen says, went back to the Greeble grind this morning, so he's doing Greebles for his spaceship at the moment. Good to hear. Now we're looking good. Again, anyone that wants to see Galen's Greebles, um, you can jump on the Discord server, the Phil Does 3D Discord server. Just type exclamation Discord in Twitch chat or click the little blue graphic below my stream in my panels that says join the Phil Does 3D Discord. You can get an invite link that way. Uh, there's a gallery section there where you can post links to your work and everyone is free to post links on Discord. But don't post links in Twitch chat unless you're a sub. Otherwise, you will get timed out either by Nightbot or Sniper Echo. But that's good to hear, Galen. I'm looking forward to seeing it all come together. Should be really cool because the Greebles were looking nice and detailed. Ah, uh, yes, we're going to continue working on our Art Deco building. I don't know if you guys saw my post on Twitter because remember, guys, if you, don't, if you don't follow me on Twitter, you should. Um, if I can't stream for any reason, you'll know about it on Twitter first. Uh, but yeah, I posted the video of the cameras we worked on last week of the interior because we've started to move into the interior of the building now. And we're setting up our cameras for all of our interior shots. Um, I will play through that video shortly. I'll just give it another five minutes or so for a couple of people to, cat to jump into the stream if they're not here already. So we don't have to repeat ourselves later on. Uh, Galen's Greebles sounded like a double entendre. <laughs> In Galen's Greebles. There you go. Check out Galen's Greebles. And I actually had to ask Galen what Greebles were. Uh, <laughs> I've only been in 3D for 15 years and uh, didn't know. <laughs> there you go. I mean, I, I know what they are, but I hadn't heard the word Greeble before. Um, I've used a similar thing when I've jumped into ZBrush and stuff, but yeah. <laughs> it's a good way to detail up your model quickly if you create these little pieces that you can attach to the main geometry. Uh, Galen says some people know them as Nernies? Nernies. I've never heard that word either. They have a word for them in ZBrush and I can't remember what it is because you guys know how much I love ZBrush and I'm always in that program. Not. Um, there is a word that they use in ZBrush as well. I can't remember what they call it. Uh, yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> it's ZBrush. I don't want to think about it. Uh, but I've never heard Nernies before. That's interesting. Very interesting. So yes, our deco building, we've done the main hallway. Now, I was going to set up another camera for this hallway because we've created three. Three cameras. One going when we enter the hall, one where we go past the angels, and another one where we just pan across the um, the, the hall itself. I was going to do one more where we sort of looked here in the corner uh, up at the banner, but just those three cameras have taken me to 30 seconds just for those three camera shots. And we've only got like maybe two and a half minutes inside the building um, and we've still got the rest of the building to do so uh, even though I want to set up more cameras than I'm going to use I think three cameras for the entryway is probably enough because I'm just going to have too much footage and not enough time to squish it all into a four and a half minute audio track so <laughs> I think we've got to move on Johan the creator good to see you Johan says if you've ever seen Star Wars you've seen Greebles Greeblies Greeblies and Gre Greeble. <laughs> Greebles, Greeblies, oh wow. Mouth and brain aren't working together this morning, guys and girls. And I have seen Star Wars. I've seen all the Star Wars movies. I'm a big Star Wars fan. Big Star Trek fan. Big Alien movies fan. I like them all. 
Did you guys see that they're, they're bringing out a new Predator movie? I didn't know that that was happening. It's in cinemas in this country, at least, in the, ne- in, in the next week or so. Another Predator movie. This must be like number six or something now, I think, that they're up to. Wow. Little did Arnold know what he was letting the world in for when he made the first Predator movie, hey? I'm just going to mute my mic for a sec while I uh, take a drink so you don't have to listen to me drink. <coughs> Pardon me, there we go. <laughs> Smurfberg Barbecue, good to see you, and I love the rainbow. What a pretty rainbow. Very nice. Good to see you, Smurfberg. How are you, buddy? Um, Gerlin says, Greebles, just, I just can't type. And Johan says, think of the surface of the Death Star or Star Destroyer. Those are Greebles. There you go. You've got a visual interpretation there for you. The Death Star is such a cool looking spaceship, I guess you'd call it. I don't know. It's so cool. I remember the first time I saw that in Star Trek, I thought, wow, that's mega cool. Whoever invented that or came up with the concept idea for it, incredibly cool. And yes, thank you, Smurfberry, for the lovely rainbow. It's beautiful. Uh, so, yes, we, um, <laughs> we, I can't. I don't want to do another camera in the hallway because, like I said, we're up to to 30 seconds already and we've only got two and a half minutes for the entire building. So we're going to move into the uh, stairwell today for our camera shots. But considering you guys are all here at the moment, let's have a look at the video. Again, if you um, saw it either on Twitter, on my Twitter page or on my YouTube channel, there's a 4K version on YouTube that you can also check out in your own time if you haven't seen it. Uh, Mondays is when we review the camera work from the previous week so that's what we're going to do right now uh, again this is just for those people that may not have kept caught it on my um, on my Twitter page or on YouTube instead of playing the individual cameras like we normally do uh, I'm going to play the shortcut that I put together uh, Johan says did you just say Star Trek by mistake <laughs> that's blasphemy to some Star Wars fans I like them all. I like Star Wars. I like Star Trek. I like the new Star Trek movies, which is blasphemy to most Star Trek fans because, you know, if you're a true Trekkie, then it's only classic Star Trek. But uh, I like I like classic Star Trek. I like Next Generation. I like Voyager. Um, I didn't like Deep Space Nine. And I like the new Star Trek movies. I thought they were pretty cool too. And I love all the Star Wars movies. So. Um, 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 which this is the one I think I want to play here. Now, I just made a couple of updates to, to this. You, you saw this on my Twitter page, but I re-rendered it uh, over the weekend just to... I just added a couple of lights. I just thought some areas of the uh, curtain particularly were looking a bit dark. So around here, you would have noticed in the original, it was very dark. Now, I just added a light there to lighten it up. You triggered Smurfery Barbecue. Uh, I'll find a reason for it later. <laughs> uh, so yes, this is our hallway. Uh, and, and like I said, it's a, it's the same shot you saw on Twitter, but uh, I've just added a couple of lights to bring out the curtains because we couldn't really see the curtains. And I like the curtains, so I wanted to see them. Uh, so that's just the only change. It's just two lights have been added either side of the angels to bring up the curtains. Um, I, I'm going to do this throughout the entire building because we've been working on the uh, environment for the last month or two doing our camera work um, and I've never set up any cameras inside the building so when I render out the cameras if I find any areas that are looking a little dark we will rework them a little bit it's looking good thank you Android Lust I'm glad you like it we're getting there we are getting there once we I'm, I'm actually looking forward to putting it all together to the music and the sound to the soundtrack and the uh, effects tracks that's another fun thing uh, I like setting up cameras. It's a fun thing to do in 3D. Um, I particularly like doing the interior work because there's more interesting things to look at than in an, in an environment where you've just got basically trees and you know and grass. We did a pretty good job with our cameras in the environment, but there's, we can create 
more interesting looking shots with an interior because there's so much to look at. So yeah, the level is showing off uh, physics assets, cloth physics, it's got custom luck color correction, uh, depth of field, B-O-K-E-H, I never know how to pronounce that, but Hecky or depth of field. Um, all the, all the bells and whistles that we want for, you know, we want to see in our game engine is turned on and turned up to the max in our cinematic. Uh, so yes, we won't, uh, I was going to do another camera shot around here going up, panning up towards the, uh, the banner, but <laughs> 30 seconds already, we've got to move on to another room, otherwise we're just going to end up with too much footage. Uh, Johan says, I think it's pronounced Boca. Boca, you are exactly right. Thank you. Thank you, Johan. Boca. Boca depth of field. There we go. Um, so, yes, that's our cinematic. That's uh, the entry shot, which will be the first shot people see when we play back our final cinematic. It's the, the first shot they'll see of the interior of the building anyway. Okay, let's close that down and let's jump into Unreal, I think. No, I said close it down. There we go. Get rid of those white screens so you don't see the glare of my glasses. I'm actually looking forward to when Microsoft uh, release the next version of Windows 10, the update, because they're going to include a, a dark theme for the file explorer. So that should help with um, help me when I'm streaming and I have my browser windows up, my explorer windows up with the screen glare happening on my glasses even though i had them the lens is specially tinted so that that's not supposed to happen i don't know i paid extra for the tint on the on the lenses so that um they don't get blurred they don't smudge when i touch them and uh and it's supposed to cut back on the glare you're supposed to be able to see my eyes more apparently that's that's how they sold it to me um okay so let's have a look here we're up to shot 42 Johan says, I'm excited as well for the update because I've heard that a file explorer with tabs is coming. That'd be cool too. Oh, I hope they do that. Wow. Yeah, tabs in file explorer would be wonderful because, I mean, tabs in browsers are, you know, invaluable. So, yep, I'm just looking forward to the dark theme as well because I turn everything dark. You know, in Twitch, you can turn on dark mode. I have that always turned on on my Twitch when I, whenever I serve Twitch and... Also, when I'm on Twitter, dark, dark mode is turned on. Anytime I can turn on dark mode, I do. I just think it looks nicer. I, maybe I'm biased because, you know, my website is all dark. It's all blacks and greys and, yeah, <laughs> I like dark. Uh, Smurfberry says, that got delayed again. No, no, don't say that. No. If you've got to force these updates on us, Microsoft, every six months, which is a major pain, by the way, the cumulative updates are getting out of control. It used to be like, you know, once a month, and now they're doing at least twice a month on cumulative updates. And uh, I'm always wary of those things because they always break something. Unintentionally, something will stop working after a cumulative update and you've got to work out what's going on. Just, just OBS alone. Every time I do a cumulative update from Microsoft Windows 10, I have to reset uh, all of my sound sources in OBS. It just, OBS just loses its mind and can't find my you know, my desktop audio source or my headphone audio source, I have to redo it all. <laughs> it's a pain in the ass. Uh, Johan says the whole update or something we were talking about. Yeah, the whole Windows update thing is... Oh, yeah. Uh, what, do, yeah what do you mean? No, I agree. Hey, Phil and Joe. Sniper Echo, good to see you, buddy. How are you? And thank you again, Sniper Echo, for those games. That is awesome of you. Um, very good of you. You really did not have to do that. Uh, I do appreciate it, but the work you do as a mod is more than enough for me. So you are absolutely awesome, Sniper. Thank you very much. Android Lust says, I've been using Tabbed File Explorer for a while now. It's something called QT Tab Bar. Mm, okay. Android Lust says, but I'd love to have it in vanilla Windows. Yeah, I, I, I there, are, there are programs you can get like fences and all that sort of stuff made by um, Stardock, which can add to Windows. But I, I'm always wary about doing that because Windows is such a complicated little beast on its own. When you start adding third party plugins to it, um, you can sometimes run into trouble. Not that I'm saying Stardock's products are bad, they're not. Um, I don't. I, I, I've purchased them in the past and used them in the past. I don't use. I just use vanilla Windows now. So I agree with you. Um, 
Android Lust, anything vanilla is the way to go if, you can, if, if we can convince Microsoft to put it in. Johan says, I don't like using third-party stuff for the OS. Makes it too messy. Yeah, I, and I'm just a bit wary. Sometimes it can sometimes break things. I used to use a plugin for Windows that, you know, a target file when you open up a your Explorer window and you go to a folder that's got lots of target files, TGAs. You can't see an icon of what that is like you can with JPEGs and stuff. It shows you a little a little view of actually, of the actual image. So I installed a plugin that allows you to see that image using targets. Um, but I found that it started to cause problems with um, with Windows Explorer. Windows Explorer used to start crashing out and all this sort of stuff. So I had to uninstall it. And that's just because I work with a lot of images all the time and I, I like to see them. I don't want to have to open them up to find out what they are. Um, I wish Microsoft would... Um, include some sort of view of photographer files native within the OS. You use Pictus for that Smokeberry? Has it been stable for you? Have, have you had any problems running it with um, Windows? Because I would like a workaround because like I said I do use, I, I work with a lot of images and it would be nice to be able to see them without having to open them. No problems? I, I'll check it out then. Pictus. Okay, I will check that out. Because as far as I know Microsoft have no plans on implementing um, a feature in Windows where you can see targets. Not to my knowledge, they haven't mentioned anything anyway. Just checking our performance here. It's not too bad, considering we've got so much going on in this building and I've done no optimization on the level. Our performance isn't too bad. Uh, Johan says, yeah, I used to use target TGAs, but I stopped for that reason right now for textures, I use PNG, I'm using them as well. <laughs> for reference photos, I use JPEG and utility textures like Alphas, I use TIFF. Yeah, um, TIFF is the best file format for lossless TIFF and Targa. Uh, lossless, so you, you, you will lose no image quality. JPEG, of course, is the worst for, for um, losing image quality. Uh, PNG is lossless as well, so that's a good one to use, and I use PNG now too. Like. This project, we're saving out PNG images, and then I turn them into a MEVI file. Um, I usually use targets, though, when I'm saving out for images. It's say if I'm doing it from um, Max or something, I'll use Targa, just because I'm used to it now. And Targa, I find, TIFF is the best, but the biggest file size. Targa is still a large file size, but it's smaller than TIFF. PNG is actually the smallest of the three of them for lossless that I've found. So PNG wins in all all around. Um, the reason I use Targa though is because it probably gets back to my days of working in web design and print. We used to either use TIFF or Targa, and I think I just got stuck in my set in my ways when I worked in print, uh, and I still use Targa. But tips are great. Um, so tips PNGs are great. Mepri says, I used to have a different one for Windows 7, but it doesn't work in Windows 10. So I had to find something else to generate the Explorer thumbnails for Targa. Um, Mepri says, how the heck are your Targa TGAs larger than your TIFFs? No, 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 they're not. TIFFs are the largest. The largest file size is TIFF that I found. After TIFF, it's Targa, and after Targa, it's PNG. So PNG of all of the lossless file formats is the smallest. And then there's Targa, and then there's TIFF, which is the largest I've found. TIFF has been around for donkey's years too. Very, very old file format TIFF. Again, used in um, print a lot as well. Uh, Johan says, I don't use PNGs for reference or utility because I can't add tags. Oh, okay. Uh, Xpec, good to see you, Xpec. Says I'm back and no six months since last time. <laughs> That's right. You said you're going to come back in six months after I've finished. <laughs> well, maybe that wasn't you. My apologies. Good to see you though, expect. And Smurfery says, uh, flip that. How are your tips larger than your targets? They are. I found that tip is larger than target. Um, yeah. Remember though, we're talking about three to six hundred DPI images here. Not when not when I'm talking screen resolution seventy two to one hundred and fifty DPI. I'm talking uh, print quality images at 300 to 600 dpi. I found TIFF to be the largest, at least when it's saved out from Photoshop. Targa is the second largest and PNG is the smallest. <laughs> That's what I found. 
I don't use tip anymore. I, I stick to Targa and PNG now. Um, Galen says, I usually use PNG whenever I can. Yeah, it's the best way to go. You can sometimes have some problems with PNG because Max Max's PNG format is different to Photoshop's PNG format. And people can run into trouble with their alpha maps because of these two sort of differing formats. You can install a plugin in Photoshop to give you both options if you want those. So it's not a big deal. And it's an open source plugin that you can install in Photoshop. You don't pay for it. So PNG is definitely the way to go, Galen. Uh, Johan says, I don't worry about file sizes that much at the end of the day. Most of the images I, I use are going to be are going into an engine, which is going to convert it to a file format like always. Yeah. Uh, which is a good point here with Unreal. I'm pretty sure that they still convert every every image you import gets converted into some file format that's best for the engine that Epic have created. I mean, behind the scenes, that all happens. It used to be like that with UDK. I'm pretty sure they probably still do it with UE4. Um, yeah, for performance, they would have created their own format that they save out to whenever you bake your game out and that sort of thing. I'm assuming, I'm assuming they're still doing that. I could be completely wrong and somebody could start yelling at me saying, no, Phil, you are wrong. <laughs> um, but I agree. I don't worry too much about file sizes because I have terabyte hard drives. Um, and and this, this project, even though we're using PNG, after I've made the movie file, I delete the uh, stills because I don't need them. And I can just re-render them relatively quickly out of the engine if I need them again. And as Johan says, hard drive space is relatively cheap now. That's exactly right. Xpec says, I always use PNG for my model textures. Does this make me a bad person or is that right? No, that is right. That does not make you a bad person. Using PNG for your model textures is completely fine. Um, yeah, no, that's no problem at all. I generally use Targa, but PNG is fine. It's lossless, so it's fine. And it's the smallest file size which has its benefits for 3D models because it has to be loaded into memory before it's either rendered real time in an engine like Unreal or rendered uh, using V-Ray or Mental Ray or Arnold or any of those other renderers. Um, so the smaller file size of a PNG will be better in the long run because it uses less memory in your computer. So that's the way to go. You're doing it right, Xpec. Uh, Sniper says, I use PNG mainly myself. Yep. Johan says, yeah, Photoshop PNGs can cause problems with alphas, but I use Substance, so not really an issue. And remember, you can get this plugin I've shown you guys before on stream. And we've been talking about PNGs. So that this open source plugin you can get, um, just type PN PNG open source Photoshop into Google, and I'm pretty sure the first, first listing will be for this uh, plugin you can download. It's free. And it'll give you the option to save in both formats, different PNG formats in Photoshop. Uh, I use it because, um, like I said, Max saves out PNGs a certain way and Photoshop does it a different way and this allows me to use both. So. And Android Lust says, use JPEG for textures, make you a bad person. <laughs> well, listen, JPEG is not, it's not terrible. I mean, as long as you don't compress it too much, it's pretty good. It, it's lousy. It's, a, it's not lossless though. So you are going to be throwing out color information in JPEG. But it's going to be the, the smallest file size. It's more, even smaller than PNG. Um, just remember, don't save your normal maps as JPEGs. That, that will kill the normal map. It will destroy it. So never, ever, ever save a normal map as a JPEG. Never. Um, but you can get away with using JPEGs, like I said, as long as you don't compress them too much. Don't compress the bejesus out of them and you should be fine. And it will be the smallest file size. Um, but most, most designers don't want to lose colour information. That's why they stick to PNG or Targa. Um, Galen says uh, JPEG normal maps. Yeah, that's right. Don't don't laugh. People do it. I've seen it in the studio. I've, I've been working with people, with mentoring younger designers in the studio who are maybe fresh out of maybe fresh out of school or maybe have not attended school. Not not all of the people that work in our studio. Um, have gone to university or anything like that. That's why I say to you guys, it's not necessary to actually go to uni to learn to do 3D or anything like that. You, if, you can pick it up on your own, in your own time. Uh, but some, some I've seen some younger designers use JPEGs for their normal maps. So you can laugh, but I've seen it happen. Now you're extra triggered, Smurfberry says. <laughs> you're mad, Smurfberry Barbecue. You cray cray. 
I hate that word, cray cray. Um, <laughs> Xbeck says, uh, I'm at uni for 3D, but I learn more in my own time than the lessons. It's really quite odd and quite annoying. I found the same thing, you know, Xbeck. When I went to university to study, um, I, 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 I had learned stuff on my own prior to going to uni. And then I went to uni and they gave us their course material that we had to work to, for our exams and all that sort of stuff. And I found that I learned more on my own time than I learned in university as well. Mainly because, I don't know, the, the lecturers at uni, at uni have a, only a certain amount of time to sort of spew out all their information for the day for the, you know, for the lesson plan. So I guess they have to sort of like pick and choose what they tell you <laughs> just to get it all in. So yeah, I, I'm a big, big fan of self-learning, uh, particularly video tutorials. I think they're amazingly excellent, particularly with uh, the internet now. There's no excuse for you not to learn. Well, heaps of videos on YouTube that are free to watch um, with some really, really good information from some really talented people, you know, telling, giving you their um, input as to how they do stuff in a video is invaluable. At least that's what I find. You've been doing it all wrong, Samantha Reco says, oh no. <laughs> You've been doing it all wrong. So we're going to, I think what we're going to do here is um, we've set up our cameras, like I said, I, I would have liked to have done another camera here. I would have liked to show off this little clock and uh, Tiffany lamp and the, and the banner a little bit more with a camera that maybe panned up or something like that. But we just can't do it. I'm just going to, 30 seconds already in the hallway and two and a half minutes for the whole building. We've got to move on. <laughs> Uh, Xbeck says, yeah, I showed my portfolio to the in, in the interview and they said it was uh, just as good as their third year students. So I knew it was going to be something, be somewhat annoying from that moment. And at that time, my work wasn't even that good. <laughs> uh, I remember um, one of my lecturers, I, I think he was teaching his Flash at the time, Adobe Flash, which is now Adobe Animate. Um, showed uh, did a, a mock-up example for what he wanted some from us an example of something that we, he wanted us to create in flash and uh, i remember looking at his color scheme and thinking oh bad 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 he, he used like purple and green and yellow the colors that you don't generally mix together so his design for this animated flash project that he created to show us what he wanted the type of thing that he wanted. The colour scheme was just awful. Uh, and I remember having a go at him about it in a joking way. He was a nice guy. And, you know. So I joked around with him about how, how terrible his colour scheme was. And that was from the lecturer. That was a lecturer. <laughs> so I get where you're coming from, I expect. I do get it. Johan says, that colour scheme gave me minor headache just now. <laughs> yes, imagine purple and bright green. We're not talking, we're not talking dull green. We're talking like lime green bright purple and bright yellow mixed together in a design it, it didn't look good it did not look good let's just say that it didn't look good uh so yes i think we're going to set up a camera now where we start to move into the hallway uh johan says like rgb green yeah like rgb green that's right but instead of the b think of the p the purple <laughs> it was terrible um now it's a very it's a cultural when, we, when you talk color it's very cultural uh, the asian culture favor a lot of um green lime green and orange they like those colors that's what they that's what they're used to in their culture uh, so it, it can be it, it can be a cultural thing as far as color scheme preferences go uh, I, i'm more traditional when it comes to color schemes i like i like things to blend nicely i don't like garish color uh, but I don't want to insult any Asians watching because I do know that they like lime green and they like orange. I like to put those two colours together. Um, XPEG says almost as bad a colour scheme as JPEGs for text. <laughs> Smurfery says, wow, I'm having flashbacks to the RGB flash theme meme. I don't, don't think I've seen that meme. Uh, so yes, Asian viewers, if you're watching me, I'm not having a go at you for, for your lime green and orange. I know that's part of your culture. Those colors are part of your culture. 
Uh, we need to take a camera into this room. So I want to come up with a camera shot that's going to be interesting. I want to see the plants that sort of overhang the doorway. I think that'll make an interesting shot. So I think what I'm going to do is... Uh, Johan says, Phil hates that. Oh, that's not true. You get a Phil slap, Johan. I did not say that at all. How rude. Phil slap for you. <laughs> I did not say that. I do not. I do not. I love Asian. I love all nationalities. I am not prejudiced one way for anyone. <laughs> uh, Smepper says, you can Google RGB. Uh, LB on black sheep, but be warned, it's definitely a seizure warning if you're photosensitive. Well, check that out. RGB, LB on black sheep. Um, XPEG says, shot from the ground, looking up, seeing the stairway and plants. Yeah, I was thinking that too, XPEG. I'm just trying to work out whether I want another shot of the angel before we pass through. Like, I could pull the camera back. Maybe not back that far. We could sort of set, start our camera maybe here so we get one of the angels in the shot we move forward it sort of gives a bit of context too for people instead of starting the camera here in the next shot people might by showing the angel because we've shown the angel in the previous three shots it gives people again that context as to where they are within the scene while they're watching it so maybe if we start our camera here we can move it through and as we move it through we can pan it up until we get to around about just inside the gateway. I just want to see a bit of the chandelier. So let, let's let's do that, shall we? So the first thing we need to do, I think, is uh, lay down a camera rail rig. So I'm just going to pull up here so I get a good overview of what's going on. Go into my cinematic folder and pull in a rig rail. I call it a rail rig, but uh, Epic call it a rig rail. There you go. Um, I'm just going to pull it up a little bit. Right, so there we go. I might pull it up just a little bit more. Let us rotate it. Um, I'm going to turn angle snap on here for the rotation. because I want to make sure it stays nice and straight. Xpec says that looks to work. Well, I'm glad you approve, Xpec. You guys, you can give me all the input you want. Just because I'm making it doesn't mean um, I have to listen to you. No, it doesn't mean that I'm not interested. <laughs> cheeky Phil, cheeky Phil. Um, I'm just going to hold down the Alt key here and drag out another point for our rail. And I may pull this in a little bit. Let's drag out another point for our rail, and that's a very severe um, curve there, so I may have to look at smoothing that out a bit, I think. Uh, expect sev never use rails. They work the same as a real-life camera rail. They certainly do. That was why uh, Epic Games included the crane and the rail because the, they mimic um, what you find on a film set and uh, they use them obviously on film sets to keep the camera nice and stable and that's why I'm using them as well because um, I've mentioned to you guys before trying to animate your camera without any sort of uh, lock like a rail or a rig you can end up getting jitters happening in your camera unintended jitters um, by locking it to a rail or a crane, you get a nice smooth movement with your camera. And that's what we want. We want it to look like uh, cinematic that they use in, in film, so that's the reason we're using it. Okay, let me let me adjust my rail here because it's, it's all over the place. So at the end here, I need to straighten it out because it's on a bit of a curve. Um, I'm going to pull this one back a little bit. Might rotate it a little bit as well. 
again just to get the curve uh, a little bit nicer a little bit smoother actually may move this one along a little bit uh, so yeah rails getting back to rails are really good to use in unreal because um they can really help stabilize your camera now you have seen me not use them and move by hand move the camera by hand but every time I've done that, I've only ever moved the camera in one axis. I've never tried to move it in more than one axis. So it's fine so long as you don't move it, as long as you stick to one axis. Um, but if you want to sort of move your camera along and move it up, use a rail or a crane. You'll save yourself a heap of problems later on because you won't get that horrible jitter. Um, I'm going to move this one out because I want it to straighten up. And we can't be as fast and loose as we were with our um, with our rigs as we were with the environment because the interior here is quite uh, cramped compared to an environment. So we have to make sure that all of our um, all of our rails and cameras we're just going to take a bit more pay a bit more attention to what we're doing and take it a bit more slowly so we don't get some weird glitches happening like passing through geometry and that sort of stuff with the camera. Johan says, uh, ever use a controller to animate the camera? It would, I would imagine that would work as well. Um, yeah, I look, I have my Xbox One controller here, which is what I use to game on, actually, on my PC. Sacrilege. PC Master Ace, and I'm using a controller. Uh, I don't always. I sometimes use the mouse, or I use you, you, that video, that photograph I showed you of my um, workstation here. I have uh, a HOTAS, a flight stick and uh, throttle. Uh, so I use that as well, but... I use my Xbox One controller for some games. And I do know people that do use their controller to do that. Uh, in the UDK games, uh, UDK engine era and UE3, people used to do, use their controller to make their camera movements cause, because it, those engines didn't have these um, rigs available. Um, and these rigs are really the best way to go. That's why they use them in film because it's the easiest and the best way to actually animate your camera. But I have used a controller to animate. Getting back to you, my long-winded answer to your question there, um, Johan. Uh, Xbox says, uh, some games just need controller. I play Rocket League, for example. No way I, will I play that with a mouse and keyboard. I agree. Um, the Witcher, The Witcher 3. You guys know I love The Witcher 3. And I use a controller for that game, and I find it excellent. I don't need the mouse and keyboard for Witcher. I use the controller. And the Xbox One controller is actually pretty good. Microsoft did a pretty good job with that controller, I have to admit. It's nice to use, uh, it's responsive, um, it's expensive, considering it's just a controller. Um, not overly expensive, but you know, it's, it's the price of a, a decent mouse sort of thing. Um, but no, I love it. Love the controller. They did a good job. One of the few times Microsoft, no, that's not true. Yes. One of the few, I was going to say, one of the few times Microsoft have actually done a good job. I'm just going to uh, select my rail and I'm going to move it over because at the moment it's sort of passing through half of our gate there. And we don't want that, we want it to be about the middle. Um, Johan says, the only thing about using a controller for The Witcher 3 is changing changing things. It's definitely faster with keyboard and mouse. Or oh, signs, changing signs. Yeah, well, uh, yeah, that's, that's true. That, that is true. Um, I'm not saying I don't use the keyboard in The Witcher though, just because I use the controller. I, I'm, and I'm sitting in my PC and my keyboard is right in front of me. Uh, I can I can use the I can bind those to some keys on the keyboard as well. So, and that's generally what I do for the signs. I play with the controller, and if I need to use a sign, I can quickly just hit a key, sort of thing. Uh, Android Lost says, uh, I can't play driving games with a mouse and keyboard. No, I can't either. But then I don't really play a lot of driving games, I have to say. Not a big driving game player. Driving game player. Okay, I'm, I think what I'm going to do here too is I might move this out a little bit. I think it's a bit close to the angel. Uh, we may, we'll play around with that in a sec when we attach our camera. 
Uh, Johan says you can't use both, Bill. That's illegal. That's right. Well, you can't use a mouse and keyboard at the same time either, can you? It's illegal. <laughs> hey, let's uh, create a new shot for this, though. Let's do that first. So it's going to be shot 43. Shot 43. Let's open that up, and that should be a completely blank shot track. That's what I want. Now, I'm just going to turn real time up here because I don't need real time on while I'm um, setting up my cameras. I'm just looking at my rail here to make sure I don't have any weird kinks or anything going on. Uh, Johan says, speaking of games, anyone hyped about Spider-Man in four days? Yeah, I heard about that. No, uh, no, I'm not going to be playing it. <laughs> it's not, it's not, yeah, look, it's supposed, it's supposed to be great, but um, yeah, I, I won't be playing Spider-Man. That looks pretty straight, I think. Just looking at that spline curve there to make sure it looks okay. But yes, no, I have heard good things. Uh, I'm looking forward to Cyberpunk 2077 by um, by the same people that make The Witcher games, um, CD Projekt Red. That looks amazing, that game. Although I was a little, little disappointed with the uh, gameplay video they released about a week or two ago. It just looked a bit bland. Where they were showing shots of um, the characters on a mission inside of a building. I just thought it looked a bit, the inside looked a bit bland. Hopefully, though, by the time they release it in 2019, uh, it, it, they'll improve it. I think it was the lighting. Something about the lighting just didn't look right. Um, but like I said, Witcher 3, they did an amazing job. The game looks beautiful. So I'm sure they'll get it all worked out before they actually release it. <laughs> Johan says, well, compared to this house, yes, it is a bit bland. Um, and again, though, they're showing alpha sort of gameplay and, and stuff so when they're in the alpha stage things can change quite dramatically by the time it actually goes uh, out to the public in a re in a re final release so i'm not not judging them based on early alpha <laughs> and don't, don't get me wrong i love cd project red they do amazing stuff and the witcher is one of my favorite um games to play of all time it's just beautiful I'm sure they'll, they'll, they'll fix it. <laughs> um, uh, Xbox says games change so much before a release. So yeah, lots of changes uh, and improvements. I'm sure, I'm sure they will as well. And they made a point of saying that, that they, they, they weren't sure if they should release anything yet to show people because they didn't want people to, to think that what they were showing them was going to be the final thing that they deliver. Um, so even they were aware, they, they were worried that people would get would think, oh, this is what it looks like. This is what it's going to be. Um, so yeah, they're going to they, they will make changes and adjustments and improvements and all that sort of stuff before they release it. I'm sure. Uh, Johan says, uh, no, nah, they're going to change. They're not going to change anything. It's not like they said uh, that in the trailer multiple times yet. That's right. So they've they've gone to pains to tell people that. Um, this is early gameplay footage and things will change. Uh, I'm just going to rename this camera rig rail so I can find it again more easily when I want to attach the camera. And we're going to call this one Z-A-Z-A. -Z -A. Zaza, why not? But that's just so that, like I said, when I attach the, um, when I come to attach the, ca the cinematic camera, I can find it. Because I've got so many uh, camera rigs here. Speaking of which, let's pull in a cinematic camera. And let's just place it up above our rail. Uh, Xbox says that Star Space game Bethesda showed looks interesting or something I'd like to know more about. I don't quite remember that game. 
I sort of I sort of remember it, but I'd have to look it up again. Bethesda make great games. Don't get me wrong, they do. I mean, I loved uh, I loved Oblivion. I liked uh, Elder Scrolls and all that, all those games. And I'm looking forward to the new Elder Scrolls game, Elder Scrolls Six. That should be fun because I spent ten hundreds of hours of gameplay in um, Elder Scrolls Five. Was it five? Six, seven, I'm getting confused with my numbers. The last Elder Scrolls game. Not Elder Scrolls Online. I don't like that. You guys know I don't play uh, multiplayer online. I like my single player experience. Um, and the Elder Scrolls game was great. So I'm looking forward to the new one. I'm sure they're going to do an amazing job. And the video that they released, the teaser that Bethesda released for it, did look cool. Looks like they're finally updating their engine. Finally. Thank you, Bethesda. Get away from Gambrio, do something, use a better engine. Uh, very short trailer, was it E3, uh, Xbox says? Yep. I think that's the same time that they, they showed the trailer for the new Elder Scrolls game. Johan says, uh, Starfield, they didn't really show anything. Smepper says, showed is a very generous way to refer to it. <laughs> and Xbox says, no, I know, but, uh, but hence why I said something I'd like to know more about. I thought that too of the, uh, the teaser that they gave us for the new Elder Scrolls game. I thought it was very short. You sort of like have to pause the video at, to see what what's happening and then it's all over within, you know, 15 or 20 seconds. Um, well, what they showed looked nice. The environment looked, looked lovely. The details look, looked amazing in the environment. So um, I'm looking forward to seeing what they come up with. I'm sure they're going to do a good job. I mean, that's their main money earner for Bethesda. The Fallout games and the uh, Elder Scrolls games. So without those, <laughs> I actually don't know if they work on much of anything else. They, they, I know that they have other studios under their umbrella of their company that make games like Wolfstein and all that. But that, that's their not Bethesda games. They're not made by that studio. Um, Johan says I wouldn't even call it a teaser for today by today's standards. Yeah, I think you're probably right. Um, but I'm looking forward to the new Elder Scrolls game. I'm sure, like I said, I'm sure they're going to do a good job. Because the last one was amazing. I'm just making sure my camera is positioned over my rail. Just because you got a rail, don't think you've got to put your camera right above it. I could put the camera over here and way, way up, and it will still follow the rail. Um, I just like to sit, sort of have my camera above my rail so it's easy for me to, to find, <laughs> as opposed to being uh, wandering out in the distance out here. But you don't have to. You can, you can attach your camera in any position within your scene. Uh, Xbox said, uh, no, I know, but hence why I said something I'd like to know more about. Uh, Johan says, I wouldn't even call it a teaser. Uh, Xbox says, well, if they miss, if they mess it up, they, uh, they will really suck for them. Yeah. I don't know if we're, if we're talking about the Elder Scrolls game here, but I'm assuming they wouldn't mess that up because like I said, that, that is their cash cow for Bethesda because they release it on all the consoles. It's incre incredibly popular on the PC. So it makes Bethesda a huge amount of money, or, or the, the, their umbrella company. I can't remember who bought them out, or what, what major company purchased Bethesda. I want to say Zenimax, but I don't don't know. Um, Johan says that and Fallout. Yep, those two games, Fallout and um, and the Elder Scrolls, they they make huge amounts of money for Bethesda. So yeah, which is why Todd Howard is the one that's always working on them. And Todd Howard is the guy. Who, I think he's a the lead creative guy at Bethesda. Um, so yeah, he's been with them for a very long time. Smokeberry says, "Whatever Starfield is, I hope it works for them. I can't understand not wanting to be pigeonholed into only releasing games for two IPs." I agree. Um, although, having said that, it's incredibly difficult to come up with an original IP. It's not as easy as it sounds. It was very hard, because <laughs> everything under the sun has been done now. Um, 
it's a, it's a good cash earner if you can though. I mean, just look at Ubisoft with the um, with the games that they release. I mean, Assassin's Creed. How many Assassin's Creed have they made so far? So that IP has been incredibly successful for them. I think they they, they make too many Assassin's Creed games. They release like a new one every year. It just gets too much. Nothing. I mean, they they do them well, but see something different. If I was if I was working for Ubisoft. On Assassin's Creed, on, on that project, I would be bored out of my brain by now after umpteen number of games in the Assassin's Creed series. Even though they changed the location, so that makes it a bit more interesting. Um, yeah, I don't know. I, I think I'd be bored <laughs> if I was a designer for uh, Ubisoft. Uh, Xbox says, anyone remember games like Sid Meier's Pirates? Sid Meier's Pirates. No, I'm not familiar with that. I know Sid Meier. The game doesn't spring to mind immediately. Uh, those were the good old times. Uh, as Xbox says. And Smoke says Assassin's Creed is washed out. Yeah, and then it's because they, they, they tried to milk it for all it's worth. So they keep releasing a new Assassin's Creed every year. Although I do remember reading an article recently where they said that, um, that they're going to miss this year. They're not going to release an Assassin's Creed game this year. Uh, their reasoning for that I don't know but that's what they said I think let's add our rail to, let's add our camera to our rail and our rail is called Zaza so this one here there we go uh, Johan says um, Odyssey comes out really I thought they, I remember seeing an article where they said they weren't going to release one this year for whatever reason Oh, there you go. Good on you, Ubisoft. Way to go. Another Assassin's Creed game this year. Just like last year. And the year before that. And the year before that. And the year before that. Um, maybe they meant next year. Maybe, maybe they did, actually. Maybe they did mean next year, Johan. And Xbox says maybe they got low on money. <laughs> yeah, maybe. Maybe. Um, I, don't, I don't buy Ubisoft games anymore until they've been released and reviewed because they have a habit of showing stuff at places like E3 and then when they release the final game it's nothing like what they showed nothing like what they showed I mean I understand things can change but come on Ubisoft come on you know that bait and switch Ubisoft that bait and switch um, so it wouldn't surprise me expect if they are low on money and they want to they, they need they need to um, to earn a bit more uh, Johan says, but honestly, Odyssey looks like a reskinned Origins. All of them, that's, that's my point. They all look the same now. The, the gameplay is identical in all of them. There's nothing different. You climb to the top of, top of a tower, you jump off, whether it's into a haystack or into water or whatever it is. Um, they're all the same. The gameplay is always the same. It's just getting stale, I think. From a gamer's point of view, that's my opinion. I just find that the... Um, the Assassin's Creed games are just getting a bit stale and boring to play because it's always the same thing. Maybe a different location, but always the same gameplay. Um, Johan says, just like Far Cry 4 was a reskin Far Cry 3. And Xbox says, just like Call of Duty and all those games are just reskins of the original. Well, that's true. They are all just reskins of the same game. Released every year to earn the, the uh, studios more money. All the publishers really more money. What can you do? What can you do? <laughs> Don't buy them. That's what you can do, guys and girls. If you think that these um, companies are milking you for all you're worth by just reskinning and rehashing the same game every year, don't buy it. You know, miss a year. If you're really, if you're a real diehard um, Assassin's Creed fan, maybe just miss this year and pick it up again next year or something. Come back to it a bit fresh, even though the gameplay will be exactly the same. Let's turn the camera on here so we can see what's happening in our cinematic viewport. Let me just select that viewport. If I don't do that, it will turn the camera on over here. All right, so that's what our camera's looking at. It looks like it's just a little bit off, so um, let's fix that. Let's move it. Now, 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 now. I think I'm gonna start by rotating the camera. 
uh, Xbox says poor programmers got no prob- no jobs. Uh, at least modelers are in demand. <laughs> there will always be a demand for both programmers and uh, modelers. They're the two industries, but actually modelers particularly. If you're a 3D guy, um, you're going to be even more in demand, I think, because of AI and the way that's taking over. For AI to take over it, the environment needs to be modelled. Now, I know we have photogrammetry and that's what, what our next project is after this one. Um, but even then, you still need the human input because you can't just take uh, a point cloud that's been created through photogrammetry and create a model out of it. It, it always needs to clean up. So there's always a person involved. Even even though AI is getting incredibly good now at cleaning up stuff, there's still a need for people and particularly 3D, 3D people. So... If you're in the 3D industry, um, I don't think you've got anything to worry about for, for, for a while, particularly now that everything is going virtual and 3D and with, with driverless cars and um, and everything else. It's just booming. And it'll, it'll just get bigger and bigger. But programmers are always in demand. I've got a good friend of mine is a, a software engineer uh, and his skills are in demand. And they always have been, and I've known him for like 20 years, and he's always been incredibly busy, so. Uh, until the AI takes over, yeah, well, that's true, Johan, because it is taking over everything now. You know, jobs that jobs that you thought would never have an impact by AI, like accountants and lawyers, even those things now are being taken over by, by AI and expert systems. So, yeah, no one is, no one is safe but there are safer industries than others. And of course, businesses love it because um, they don't have to pay people, don't they? You know, they just get this, they've got a server farm running and no outlay on wages. Just this is the cost of running the server. Uh, Android lost this, you're on the creator, that won't happen. <laughs> That's right, if we ignore it, it won't happen. Isn't that right, Android lost? Xbox says, when the game makes its own games, that's when we're in trouble. Oh, that's true. Although the, years ago they used to talk about programs writing programs, a bit like the Matrix, really. Um, and they tried that about ten years ago. They tried to create uh, an algorithm where software would write software, and that didn't work out too well. Oh, I mean, yeah. Probably if they try it again now, it might be better because PCs uh, because processors are much faster. Um, New hello, new hello. I do remember you. How are you? How's things? How have you been? I remember you. New hello, new hello. Sorry if I'm mispronouncing your name too, by the way. Smurfery says software that writes itself, aka neural networks. Yeah. Yeah, well, that's true, actually, Smurfery. Yeah, neural networks do write themselves, really. But they, they, they were talking years ago more of general purpose sort of software, writing software, like... You type into the program, uh, I want you to create a, an application for me that counts the number of widgets in my warehouse and then emails and then transmit that, transmits that to my sales staff, that sort of thing. They wanted to just create a program where you typed in what you wanted the thing to, to be and then the, the program wrote the program that you needed. And that didn't work well. It was bloated. It didn't, yeah. It didn't, and that, that's what it always comes down to. Uh, automation through AI can create bloat, particularly in code, and you don't want bloated code because it slows it down. It's not efficient, and that's where people, actual people writing code, are better because they they can uh, get around bloat by optimizing the code that they're writing. Whereas software doesn't really understand that. It's good to see you again, too. New hello. And I hope you've been well. I hope you had a great weekend. I hope everything's good with you. Uh, Johan says, you've seen those dog robots from Boston Dynamics opening doors for one another? We're doomed. I know, I did see those. It's creepy, isn't it? The ones where they open the door for each other and just just the Google one where it's like a dog that walks up the stairs and stuff or runs. I mean, creepy. We are all doomed. As soon as they start putting weapons on those things, we are doomed. It's going to be the Terminator all over again. So yeah, I get where you're coming from. <laughs> it frightens me a little bit. 
And I, I and I love technology. I'm a I'm a tech guy. I love it. Love it. Love it. Can't get enough technology. I'm just typical typical male. Um, but it even it, it even frightens me. I, I, I wonder where we're going to be in ten years' time because these things happen much more quickly than you realize. <laughs> We're slow to get there, but once we get there, it shoots, it just takes off. A bit like the internet, really. <laughs> um, Xbig says, I can't wait for ice cream machines making ice cream for itself. That, that, that's the life. <laughs> oh, well. Let's rotate a camera around here so we can get it all positioned properly. I know it's too close to the angel at the moment, but I just want to get it into position properly. Okay. Uh, actually, the first thing I want to do with the camera is I want to change the uh, sensor height to 18. So we get our nice letterbox look. Uh, now we can, let's move the entire rig as opposed to moving the camera. And this is a problem we run into when we work with interior. We've only got a certain amount of room. Uh, don't. Do I want the second angel in shot or not? Well, first things first, let's rotate the camera up so it's looking up. And not straight across. Where is my camera? There it is. Just making sure my camera stays straight here. Looks okay. Um, 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 um. I might pull the camera down a little bit as well. I think it might be just a little bit too high. Because we want a nice dramatic shot. I don't. I wanted to try and avoid going too low where it cuts the top of the angel's head, though. Um, that might not be too bad. Well, at least for our starting position here. Uh, I'm just not sure if I want her in shot as well on that side. Um, Yeah, I don't know. Maybe. Well, let's say we do. Let's say we do, which will mean we need to rotate the camera around a little bit more. So that we frame both of the angels up. So I don't want to lose the, uh, the wing of the angel on that side. I want to make sure she stays in shot. And that should be a good starting shot for us. We can sort of see through the gateway there, which is where we're heading. We show the two angels to keep continuity for our viewer from the last shot. So, first things first. Let's, 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 let's set our uh, manual focal distance to 3000. And set a keyframe. little keyframe there okay now I'm going to select the transform for the camera and add keyframes for that just by pressing the S key alrighty and we'll select our camera rail rig and we'll set a keyframe for it on position zero set a keyframe didn't you there we go. It took a minute for it to, to add my keyframe. All right, now let's, let's what, the way I like to work with these rails is I like to set a starting camera keyframe and then an ending camera keyframe and then we work through the middle. I, I find that's the easiest way for me to work. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move to the end of our timeline. And I'm going to move the rail rig to one 
a camera position to, to one on the rail. So this is what our camera is looking at at the moment. I'm just going to set a keyframe there for the um, for the rail. Move back to the camera. Let's get inside here. Let's rotate our camera around to face our stairwell. Because I think that would be a more interesting looking shot. And we want to rotate it up so we're looking up toward the chandeliers hanging from the upper balcony. Maybe a little bit more. New Hello, nice work. Well, thank you, New Hello. I'm glad you like it. Um, yeah, we we put we fully furnished the building, so <laughs> the guys that are regulars to my channel know how long it's taken me to, to get here. But that's only because I can only work on it two, uh, four hours a week while I stream. Um, don't think that if you create something in Unreal, it's going to take you as long as it's taken me. It only it's only taken me so long because I only get four hours a week to work on it because I have to work on other stuff with the studio. So the only time I get to work on it is when I'm streaming. All right, so let's let's get a nice, interesting angle here. Um, I, I, I want to see a bit of the chandelier. I don't want to see all of the chandelier because the next shot we're going to do a um, we're going to, to use a, a rail crane, I think, and we'll do a shot up a proper shot up of the chandeliers during that shot. So just, just a hint of the chandelier in, in this shot, I think. Um, and it's always more interesting if things are just a little bit off angle. So like that, that cutout for the upper balcony is not directly in the middle of our shot. But taking it to an angle make, gives it a more interesting silhouette, a more interesting look, a more interesting composition. That's the word I was looking for all along. So I've just angled the camera so that the um, the mezzanine here is not directly in the middle of, of the camera shot. It's sort of off centre here. And it allows us to look at the paintings on the wall a bit more as well. So let's say that that's our ending shot. So let's set a keyframe here for that. Now we can start going through and adjusting our camera. So let's go to... Let us pan through here. So we start our shot here with the angels. Our camera moves forward. Oh, good new hello. I'm glad you joined the Pill Dust 3D Discord. Remember, guys and girls, if you're not on the Discord server, uh, you should join because everybody is welcome on Phil Dust 3D Discord. Everybody's very helpful, very friendly. There's the gallery section, as I said, that you can post uh, images of the stuff you're working on because I'm interested. You know, the reason I'm on Twitch is to uh, encourage you guys and girls to do 3D. And I want to, I'm always love looking at the stuff that you're making. So please feel free to jump on the Discord. Johan, thank you for the subscription. That's incredibly good of you, Johan. Thank you for subbing to Phil Does 3D. You are awesome. I really do appreciate it. So thank you, Johan, for the sub. Sub hype. Yeah, I haven't created a sub hype yet. I, I'm actually sort of halfway through doing one uh, through a live pop-up that I can set off, like that's Phil Slap. But I haven't haven't finished it yet. I got so you guys know I got so caught up in all the work I was doing, and then the studio took half my work away. Um, I can so I've got a bit more time now. I can finish it, <laughs> and then we'll have a sub hype. New hello, thank you for the sub as well. You are absolutely awesome. You guys are amazing, amazing. Thank you very much for subbing to the channel. I really do appreciate it. So thank you again, New Hello and Johan for the subscriptions. I do remember guys and girls, if you are subbing to the channel, um, there's a list of benefits that subs get, which you can find in my panels below my stream. Uh, you can go to my website as well because there's a subs 
section on my website which will list everything subscribers get on the Build Us 3D Discord. Build Us 3D Twitch channel. Yeah. So thank you very much both of you for subbing. Um, and I will have to create that sub hype pop-up. And you guys as subs can set those pop-ups off all on your own. If you go and look at the commands that you need, um, you can find them on my website under the subs um, section. So um, we start here, we move our camera through. I sort of want to look up. Uh, mm. Mm. Like, uh, mm. <laughs> I, I sort of want to get a better shot of the trees, but I don't want to look up too early like because I want to see the stairwell. So I think we move our camera through. I mean, I like this shot because we can see the couch here. Um, I think maybe when we get to here, I'm just worried that the stairwell is a bit, bit obscured. Like I'm wondering if rotating the camera down around here might be better, but I don't want to rotate it too far where we lose the overhang of the plants. So it's a difficult one. I'm just worried that we're not seeing enough of the stairwell. Or am I worrying for nothing? Because I could rotate the camera down around about here. I, let's do that. I, I can I can delete the keyframes if I don't like it. So maybe we move through, we move through. When we get to around about here, let's rotate the camera down just a little bit. Where is the camera? There it is. So if I rotate it down, let's rotate it down a little bit more. I sort of want to see the floor there. Um, I just want to make sure my camera is straight, so I'm just going to straighten it up. I went the wrong way. Again, I'm just going to hover over my camera here to see if it looks like it is straight. So let, let's might rotate it up a little bit. I think I've gone down a little bit too far. And again, let's straighten it up. Let's add a keyframe here. going to play play back from the beginning so we start with our angels we come through as we come around the camera pans down now I'm just worried that we're panning down a little bit too soon like we're losing she's the angels are being cut a bit too soon by the camera panning down so I think what I might do is I might slide those keyframes along a little bit Maybe two around about here. So again, we start with the angels, we come around. Uh, let me have a look at that. We come around. Um, I think. I think I might rotate the camera around a little bit to look at the stairwell. 
though I think we're going to start to lose the couch in the corner. Can I? No, that's okay. We see the couch here. I was just worried that I didn't want to rotate it so much that we lost sight of that couch because uh, I like the fabric I've got draped over it. It's an interesting fabric, so it'll, be, it'll look good in the uh, cinematic. The blue will help contrast against the red. So, but I think when we get to here, we should be facing more toward the um, the stairwell. So I'm just going to zoom in on my timeline here. So I can make sure I overwrite the right frame. And we're going to rotate the camera a little bit. I think maybe a little bit more, uh, maybe not, but I want to straighten the camera up. Wrong way. Too much. Just a little bit more. Just a little bit more. That's better. I wanted to make sure that was straight against the um, the top of the letterbox there. Um, let me just pan through here. I want to see what this has done. Now you see what's happened. Oh, I forgot to add the keyframes. <laughs> wow, Philip. Wow. So I moved the camera, moved my timeline before adding the keyframe again. And let's rotate it around. Just a little bit more. Sniper says, is it possible to render out frames of the editor instead of at runtime? Sorry in advance. So you're asking, is it possible to render out the frames of the editor instead of at runtime? Um, not trying to work out what you mean, Sniper Echo. So you want to you want to render out your camera shots? Is that what you're saying, or instead of at runtime? Because yeah, it does actually run the level when it when I start to save out the movie files, it does actually open up a window and run run the level, so it does runtime. I don't know if there's a you can I think there's a, a, a key, one of the F, F keys, function keys on the keyboard that can save a that can save a screenshot. Is that what you mean? The reason is this, you tell tell us the reason. Okay, so now I've angled the camera. I'm just going to make sure to press S to add my keyframes here to my transform. Uh, Johan says, I wouldn't think so since it's a real-time engine. I'm not sure though. Yeah, I would have thought so as well. Like there's a way to save that screenshots. But the whole point of real-time is to, to run the thing in real-time. And that's what it does when I save out my camera shots. But uh, let me know why. What's the reason you want to do that, Sniper? Why do you need this? Oops, must remember to zoom back out of my timeline. There we go. So we start here, we move around. As the camera moves through, it moves to look more at the stairwell. I just think that camera is a little bit off. It needs to be rotated. I'm looking at the floor. Sniper says, I have a semi-procedural build system that places objects and I would like to capture the placement of each object. The script won't run at real time though. Ah. Okay, so you, you've got a procedural build going on that's placing objects procedurally. 
Uh, and you, you want to capture the placement of each object. The script won't run real time though. Okay, so maybe you, you're trying to create like a, a demo of what's happening. Like you want you you want to show your procedural script in real time, populating an area. Is that what you're saying? So that's why you want it to happen. You, well, so Johan says tell the script to grow and run real time. That's that's an option. Yeah, a demo. Okay. Um, I, I would actually probably use OBS to be honest with you. Instead of trying to rely on the engine to save out stuff for you, record it with OBS because OBS is free, and that's what I use to stream to Twitch. But it's not just good for streaming. You can re I, I record video while I stream of, of me streaming. Um, maybe you could do it that way by doing a doing a screen capture using OBS, just recording the screen. That might, would that be an option? Uh, again, I don't know exactly exactly how you want the thing to look. Um, because, well actually, yeah, because you can set it to cinematic quality if you want it to look like a cinematic. So, you know, you set that in your settings here to cinematic quality, engine scalability, and then maybe record the screen once you set the script off manually. And then you can edit that video that you save out through OBS of, of a screen capture. Maybe, maybe that's an option of a way to do it. But that's probably the, the easiest way I can think of Sniper. I don't think there is a way to do it otherwise, apart from um, as Johan suggested. Um, and yeah, I just throw out OBS. There's heaps of screen capture software, but OBS is, is I found great. So that's why I mentioned it. And it's free. You don't have to pay for it, which makes it even better. Uh, that's for anyone that wants to screen capture anything that they're working on. You can use OBS. Don't think that it's just for streamers to use to stream to Twitch or YouTube or Mixer. You can record video at the same time. Or you can just record video. You don't have to stream at all. Okay, now I'm trying to decide how how I want to do this. Um, I'm just making sure my camera is straight. Sniper says, do you use OBS or Streamlabs OBS? Oh no, OBS, classic, not classic, it was OBS Studio is what I use, not Streamlabs OBS. Um, Streamlabs OBS is a fork of OBS created by Streamlabs. Um, and it's uh, an easier, it's easier to use than proper OBS, but it's a little bit more buggy. And it's not as, you don't have as many features in it as you do in the traditional OBS Studio. So I, I use OBS Studio. Um, but for what you want, Streamlabs OBS could be fine as well. I, again, I haven't used it, but from people that have used it and used OBS, they, they prefer OBS. Both of them are free, so. but I use I use OBS Studio from GitHub. All right, let's. Oh no! Got to make sure I put this in the right spot before I start moving my camera. Every time you do this, Philip. Every time. Uh, Sniper says less features, that's it. Yeah, well, yeah, less features. Like um, in traditional OBS, in OBS Studio, you can add VLC video sources and all that sort of stuff. You can't do that in, in Streamlabs OBS because they haven't inc included that yet. Um, and there are other things as well that aren't included in Streamlabs OBS that OBS has. So OBS has more features. And I find it, from what I've heard, is less buggy than Streamlabs OBS. Slobs, as they call it. But slobs, Streamlabs OBS is easier to use than normal OBS because they've sort of dumbed a lot of things down for people so that it's not as complicated to use. But OBS is not complicated. Not not once you get used to it. It's 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 not complicated. It's really not. 
it's only get, can only get complicated if you're a streamer and you want to start adding all these different video sources and overlays and cameras and all that sort of stuff. If you're not worried about that, then it's, it's not hard to use. It's very simple. Uh, and like I said, it's completely free. That's why I love it. <laughs> Anytime I can, I can choose something that's good and free, that's the way to go. And it is good. It's very good software. Uh, I don't use it just because it's free. I use it because it's good. Because I actually do have licenses for um, another piece of streaming software made by an Australian company. But uh, I've never even been tempted to use it because uh, I like OBS so much. Am I going the right way or the wrong way? Snarker Echo says, uh, yeah, I mean, it's not ZBrush. That's... <laughs> <laughs> oh, Sniper Echo. What do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? Are you having a go? You mean it's not ZBrush, that's right. You, you get a Phil Slap, Sniper Echo. Phil Slap for you. You're being cheeky. Cheeky, cheeky. <laughs> um, that's right, camera. Come on, camera. Do, do your job. Rotate for me. Rotate for me, camera. Now, I've turned on real time here, so while I rotate my camera, it happens in real time. Shock horror. Who would have thought? Looks like I got sick of moving my camera and then waiting for it to update every second or two. There we go. Um, what was I doing? <laughs> uh, Sniper says I was referring to ZBrush being impossible to use. Oh, we have to take that bill slap back then. Sniper Echo. That's right, it is. Uh, look, you guys know you, you want me to go on a tirade about ZBrush's interface. It's terrible. It's a terrible interface. I'm sorry. I love the program, but I hate the interface. I really wish that Pixel Logic would do something with that ZBrush interface. It's terrible. So bad. Unlike any other 3D interface you've ever used, it's just terrible. Just trying to work out what angle I want my camera on here. Let's set a keyframe here and have a look. Zoom back out again. Let's zoom through our timeline. Okay, start on the angels. We move through as we move through. The camera rotates toward the stairwell. So we get a nice shot of the stairwell and then we move through the gates. And as we move through the gates, the camera pans up and to the side. Let's just run that through on a loop a couple of times while I have a coffee. You can't catch a break, Sniper Echo? No. Hey, you made me feel bad. <laughs> I feel bad now. I wish I could run this fill slap in, in, in reverse. Maybe I should create one of it running in reverse to take back a fill slap. Okay, so we move through. We look at the stairwell, the camera pans up to catch the bottom of the chandelier. I'm just going to pause that for two seconds and I'm going to turn real time back off again here. And I'm going to replay it. It might give us just a little bit of a smoother camera movement to preview. Uh, Sniper says uh, that one time I wasn't here for your ZBrush stream and we um, we lost poor to Android Lust. <laughs> what is that? But wouldn't a reverse slap just be a backhanded slap? That's that's true. Yes. It would be a backhanded slap. 
Uh, listen, uh, if he doesn't need a pill slap for that, he's going to need a pill slap for something else pretty soon anyway, so it it'll still stand. <laughs> he's wise to you, Phil. <laughs> Okay, we see the angels. We camera rotates to face the stairwell. That's good. We go through the gates. As it goes through the gates, the camera pans up so we can look at our plants. And then we finish on the mezzanine chandelier base. <laughs> wow, Sniper Echo says. <laughs> you know, you, you, just, you deserve a full slap, Sniper Echo. You know you do. <laughs> I think this might be okay for this camera shot. I think what we'll do now is we'll set up another shot where we use a camera crane rig. Um, I'm just actually, I don't think we see the candles in this. Oh, do we? Yes, we do. Just, just, we see some of the candles because they've got candles on the ground there. I wanted to make sure we saw them at least once during this part of the, um, the building because the next part we're going to actually be um, using a rail rig that goes up so I'm just going to stop that we're going to do a save all so we can call this camera done and we'll create a new one. <laughs> oh, don't cry Snow Rico <laughs> oh now you made me feel bad no, no you're, you you don't deserve a sniper echo. Okay? You get a Phil hug. I can't can't really do an animation for that, so you get a Phil hug. How about that? Actually, I should create a Phil hug one. Uh, okay, we've saved our camera. Let's create a new camera. Johan says, "Wow, well, now I'm not surprised you hate." Oh, come on, Johan, that's not true. That is not true at all, Johan. <laughs> I don't hate anyone. Vicious, vicious lies and innuendo. It's not true. Let's duplicate this one. What shot are we up to again? Shot 44, I think? Shot 44. <laughs> you get a fill slap, Johan, for saying that. That is not true. And it's completely untrue. <laughs> you read it on the internet. Well, you know everything you read on the internet is true. You, you take everything you read on the internet or on Twitter as gospel because you know it's true. You know, none of this fake news. It's all true news, isn't it? Oh, <laughs> uh, wow. Okay, we have a clean blank shot track. Uh, Legmog, good to see you, Legmog. Uh, says, I do not, <laughs> I don't hate anyone except I, <laughs> uh, I can't read this out. I'll get myself banned. Bill 2018, Legmog on point. That's all, that's all lies. You, you guys, you're such, <laughs> it's fake news. Fake, fake, fake. <laughs> wow, you guys, you guys. Let me get myself organized here. Okay, it's turned off real time. I'm just going to turn real time up here. Let's move into the hallway and let's work out a shot for here. This one's going to be quite an interesting one to set up because, uh, because we've got a very narrow hallway section here with a lot of stuff going on. So I think for this shot, Johan says, uh, I heard once that Phil kicks a puppy. That's not true either. You, you, oh, wow. I'm mean, we kicking you guys. That's who we'll be kicking. <laughs> oh no, don't put the puppy there. <laughs> puppy slap. Should I do a puppy slap? <laughs> Um, for this shot, 
Uh, I'd like to actually get a shot where we see the rug as well, because we've got that Persian rug hanging on the wall, which is, of course is all cloth animated. So I think a shot where we start here, maybe pan up, and as we pan up, we look up and we finish the shot. What's an interesting angle for us to finish that shot on? Maybe, well, maybe we can go right up to the um, base of the chandelier. Let's 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 work that out in a sec. Let's start with that shot, shall we? Let's start with that crane, I should say. So, this poor puppy. That's right, sniper echo. The puppy needs a pill slap. <laughs> Let's uh, add a rig, a crane rig here. Now let's rotate it around. Oh, now, now, there we go. <laughs> let's rotate it around so it's facing in the right direction. Let's move it back. Could you imagine if this was a film set and, you know, you're in somebody's home here trying to to do your scene for your movie and you've got all this crap that the film crew have pulled in like rails and rigs and cranes and what a nightmare <laughs> actually just getting a, a rig and a, a crane rig and stuff and rails in here would be a pain if it was a real building and the advantage of the virtual world let's move it back so I don't want it, the camera to be that close. I want the camera to be back. Back, I say. Film title. And how are you, Leg Mog, anyway? I hope you're well. Film title. What do you mean, Sniper? <laughs> I'm not going to kick the puppy. Don't kick the puppy. You're also so cruel. You want to kick everything. Kick this, kick that. You shouldn't be kicking anything. It's cruel and mean. Uh, I'm just going to straighten up my crane a little bit here. And move it over a little bit. Johan says, yeah, Phil only kicks puppies, not just puppies. I'm not going to, I'm not, that's not true. I don't kick anything. <laughs> it's all lies, all lies. I don't kick puppies or any, or any, anyone or anything. All lies, vicious, vicious lies. It's all fake, fake news. I can't say it in the Trump accent. Um... I hope, did anyone know when Saturday Night Live is starting up again? Just something out of out of left field there. I don't know if you guys have watched Saturday Night, Saturday Night Live, an American comedy show. I'm waiting for that to start up again because I like um, Alec Baldwin's character when he plays Donald Trump. It's always very funny. Very funny. You would guess Saturday, uh, but it's they've been on summer break or winter break for you guys over there. No, summer break. Summer break. So they, they haven't they haven't had any new episodes of uh, Saturday Night Live for a month or two. That's why I ask. I know it's on a Saturday. <laughs> Smart ass. <laughs> Not quite a full slap, but you're getting there, Johan. You're getting there. And like I said, as a sub, you can you can give me a pill slap if you want. You've got access to those sub commands for those pop-ups. Um, okay, let's let's rename our crane here. And let's call this one Zaza Two. There we go. And let's pull in a camera. Timeless, 
You wouldn't know I don't watch Saturday Night Live? Why don't you watch SNL? It can be very funny. I find them very funny. Not always. It's a bit hit and miss. Not every guest they has is, have is great and not every skit they do is very funny, but um, sometimes they can really make me laugh. They're very funny sometimes. Usually the women. The women are more funny than the men. At least that's what I find. In my opinion. I think the girls are better comedians than the boys. Although I, I know that, um, you know that new Ghost, the Ghostbusters movie they remade and they used the all-girl cast? That copped a lot of crap from pe from male chauvinists that didn't like the fact that they replaced men with women, which didn't bother me. Everybody is equal in my opinion. Um, but it wasn't that great, unfortunately. Like, yeah. And they used that Australian actor as, in it as well, where they're sort of like, assistant secretary and then he turned evil or whatever the Australian actor the, the Hemsworth man whatever his name is just because I'm Australian doesn't mean I keep up with all those Australian actors Thor that guy the one that plays Thor um, but the, yeah unfortunately the movie just wasn't that great and that wasn't because it was an all-girl cast that was just because the movie wasn't that great a lot more to do with the script I think which was a shame, because I enjoyed the original Ghostbusters, so it's a classic. Just making sure my camera here is sort of above my crane. I could actually pull it down lower, which I may do. I may just take it down a bit closer to the crane. That looks good. Make sure it's lined up with the crane. That looks good. Johan says, yeah, just what bothers me is when people think the only reason anyone disliked it was because it was all women. Yeah, well, that's fair enough, too. I mean, it's easy for people that are critical to say, oh, you just didn't like it because it was all women. Well, no, I loved the fact that it was all women. I didn't like it because the movie was bad. The script was bad. Um, casting, I think it's, it's Chris Hemsworth, in that role was bad. He's not a great actor. I mean, I'm sorry, but he's not. He's a pretty boy, a pretty Australian boy, uh, as Thor. But he's not, not the best actor in the world. He's a bit wooden. He's a bit like Keanu Reeves. Keanu Reeves, I love his movies, but as an actor, he doesn't have a very great range. He sort of plays the same character in everything he does. And Chris Hemsworth is like that as well. He's not a very good actor. He, he plays Thor well, but hey, you know, <laughs> Thor's a bit stupid in, in the movies anyway. Uh, Johan says they did the same thing with the recent Star Wars movies. I didn't mind. I don't mind the Star Wars movies. I think they've all been pretty good. The remakes, particularly from Disney, I think they've been pretty good. I love the effects are really well done, and the story has been all right. I've liked the new Star Wars movies. I like classic Star Wars too. So yeah, no, I don't have a problem with Star Wars. Just like I have no problem with the new Star Trek movies that they made. They were pretty good too. Um, but everybody's tastes are different too. You know. Just because one person likes a movie doesn't mean everybody has to. For whatever reason. Cambric Cranes has a two. Um, yeah, so yeah, just because um, one person likes a movie, not everyone's going to. That's what makes this world such an interesting place. Everybody's different. And that's what it should be. Everybody's different. Let's add this um, rig to our new shot track. Uh, Johan said the Clone Wars and Rebel cartoons, oh yeah, uh, Rebel cartoons plus the Knights of the Old Republic era are the best instances of Star Wars, in your opinion? 
Yeah, Clone Wars. I agree. The Rebels cartoons. Yeah, I don't. Re- I never really got into them. I only watched them years ago. I watched one or two episodes, and I didn't really like it. Um, but again, each to their own. And Star Wars: Knights of the Old Republic era are the best instances. Yeah, I, I, I would agree with that. Clone Wars were particularly cool. But the cartoon, yeah, never really got into the cartoon. And I love cartoons. You guys know I'm a big manga fan, or anime as they call it now. It used to be called manga. A Japanese animation. I'm a huge fan of all of that. So I like my cartoons. But I couldn't get into the Star Wars one. Let's turn our camera on in our cinematic viewport. So we can see what we're looking at. And, uh, and, uh, and, uh. Johan says, did you hear that Disney is continuing the Clone Wars? No, I didn't hear that. I know that they're, they're planning a, quite a few more Star Wars movies <laughs> in that franchise because they, they continue the main story one year and then they do an offshoot story the following year. This is Disney. So the current, the last offshoot was uh, Han Solo, Star Wars Han Solo. And then, then they're going to go back, I think, this year to the main storyline. And then next year, it'll be another spin-off character and then back to the main storyline. So Disney are milking it for all it's worth. That's for sure. Uh, Johan says, subs can post links, right? Yes, you can post links, uh, Johan. Go right ahead. Yes, as a subscriber, you can post links in both Twitch chat and Discord. Um... Um, our camera. Where did, what did I decide? What, how did I decide I wanted to do this? I decided I wanted it here. And then I wanted to pan up and maybe move the camera over to the opposite side and up to here, I think. So, yes, you go right ahead and post links, uh, Johan. So I wanted to start the camera here. I think I want to see the banister. So I want to move the rig back. Um, I am going to turn real time back on so I can see it in real time as I move it. Okay, actually I, I look, quite like the look of the couch in the corner here as well. So I'm wondering, maybe not the entire couch, maybe just a bit of fabric there. I like the contrasting color of the uh, the tealy green and the blue and the gold. So, Star Wars The Clone Wars saved Disney streaming service. Oh, let, me, let me check this out. I'm just going to have a quick look at this link that Johan has posted. It'll let me. Uh, Johan says, but as the article says, it's uh, on their own streaming service, which is uh, really only on their own streaming service. That's a bit annoying. Oh, I'm just going to check it real quick, guys. We'll go back to the camera in two seconds. Just want to have a quick gist of this article that Johan has just posted. 12 new episodes coming to Disney streaming service. Oh, that'd be cool. Bringing back Star Wars. Well, that's, that's cool. I'll check that out. I'll leave that browser window open so I can read up on it. But only on their own service. I actually don't think we get their service in Australia. So it's good for you guys in the US, but um, not so good for me because not everything that you guys get in, is available here. Like uh, the, you know, AMC, their channel, although we get it on cable TV here. It's part of uh, the Foxtel network. But Disney, Disney we get on the Foxtel network as well. So maybe we get it that way. Maybe. Although they've just put my cable price up. I'm thinking about dropping my ca- my, my cable satellite, satellite cable, Foxtel. Because uh, they sent me a letter yesterday saying they're putting price up again, again. It's not that great to begin with, trust me. Foxtel is not not great as far as the range goes, and they keep playing the same things over and over and over. Ad nauseum. 
Uh, yeah, no, uh, Johan says I didn't know they had a streaming service unless they're talking about their channel on cable. I think they're planning on starting one, like uh, a Netflix-type service for Disney. So only Disney sort of movies or cartoons or whatever. Disney brand. Uh, I think they're planning on starting up like a, a service like Netflix for Disney stuff. Which is, I think, why they removed the Disney stuff off of Netflix uh, a few months ago. We, I, I have Netflix. I love Netflix. And uh, I do remember them removing all of the um, the Disney-related stuff from Netflix. And I think that was in anticipation of Disney. Um, I think Disney wanted, want, wanted them to do that because they're planning on starting their own service to compete with Netflix. Okay, I want to see the candles. I want to see a bit of the couch. And I want to see that post there, but uh, the camera's angled too far down, so we're going to have to angle it up. Because Hulu, we don't get Hulu in this country. Um, not that I'd get Hulu anyway, because I haven't heard great things about it, but um, and it's only been in the last year and a half or so that we've had Netflix in this country. Although uh, a lot of people over here subscribe to services. Um, in America using a VPN so so a lot of people got around it that way although they've cut they've cracked down on all that sort of stuff now like Netflix you can't watch Netflix through a VPN which sucks for those people like um, the war the vets and stuff the Americans are uh, overseas in places like Afghanistan or wherever who used to use a VPN to watch their Netflix they can't do that anymore because uh, Netflix have cracked down on the use of VPNs. And that's because of people like uh, Mr. Murdoch, who owns Foxtel, complaining that people were watching stuff on Netflix using a VPN and not watching his Foxtel network and paying three times as much for it. So, so let's start here by rotating our camera up a little bit. So we're looking just a bit of the floor. Yeah. yeah, I want to see a bit of the floor. I want to see a bit more of the banister and a bit more of that uh, lady lamp there. A bit of the couch. That all looks good. Let's start by setting our camera to 18 millimeter. Uh, now I've lost a bit of the floor, so I might rotate the camera back down a little bit. There we go. It's not great though. Mm. Mm, I can either get the top of the lamp or a bit more of the floor. Which do I prefer? Um... We could do both. We could actually do a, uh, an animation of the camera like that and before we start actually moving the camera. That, that, might, that might be cool. Let's try that. So let's say we start our animation down here. Um, let me change my focal length to 3000 and set my keyframe. And let's set a keyframe for our camera here and let's say we want a one second let's say let, let's say two second we'll go to about a two second slow pan up so here we want to rotate the camera and it's just panning up until we catch the top of that light fitting there, that little globe that we see. Yeah. Okay, let's set a keyframe there. Uh, now let's move to the end of our timeline. And let's uh, start animating our camera rig. The crane rig. 
So we know we're at zero, zero here. I don't need to change anything there. I'm just going to choose the rig. Pitch your an arm length. It's going to pull up on the pitch. Pitch, 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 pitch. Uh, we'll extend the arm length. going to get into position here where I can see what that is doing. Okay. Alright, let's try... Let's try pulling up on the pitch. Okay, now let's see if we can rotate it. Wrong way, I'll rotate it this way. This gets a bit fiddly when working with the rail, with the um, the crane. Let's look at the yaw again. Okay. Okay, that's that's not bad. What I'm going to do is I'm going to set a keyframe here for our crane. I'm going to set one for the pitch, the yaw, and the length. It's down there hidden. So I'm just going to Playback through my timeline here, and that's what I thought. It didn't um, reset to zero, but that's okay. We'll look at that in a minute. Let's jump back here. We're going to have to rotate our camera. So, let's select our camera. rotate it so I want to be looking again at an angle it's just more interesting if things are on an angle and not straight on I'm just wondering if I want to come up a little bit higher yeah in fact I think I want to catch a bit of the um a bit of that divider as well because it's interesting a little bit of a chandelier. Let's set a keyframe for our camera here. And let's set our crane back again. Oops. That's the easiest way to reset it back to default. Hit the little yellow button keys. And let's set a keyframe here. No. You got a split, Smurfberry? No problems. Thanks for being here and popping in. I'll be back on again tomorrow, Smurfberry. If I see you then, that would be cool. If not, you have a good weekend. <laughs> see you later, Smurfberry. Okay, so I want to set, make sure my keyframes are being set. I don't know what's going on with the keyframes in Unreal sometimes. I 
me double check those keyframes are there. Yes, 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 good. Let me just have a look here. See what's happening here is we had our still shop where we just panned the camera up for two seconds. Um, but the rail, but the crane is actually moving as it's doing that. So we may need to look at that. Looks like we're clipping clipping the stairwell here, which is not great. So again, I'm just going to jump down here into the perspective viewport so I can see what's happening with that crane as we're moving. It looks like yeah, it's clipping the stairwell. So we're going to have to Add some keyframes to stop it from doing that. Looks like we may just have to lock the yaw between here and here. I'm not really happy with what it's looking at here in this position. It's quite boring. So what I'm going to start, before I worry about the clipping on the stairwell, I'm going to reposition the camera. I like where it ends, but I don't like it like around about the middle here. So I like where it starts, I don't like it around the middle, and I like where it ends. So instead of playing with the crane here, I'm going to play with the camera that's attached to the crane. And we're going to start by rotating it. I think so, it's looking up. Again, we're going to straighten it out. Just a sec, guys. I got an eyelash in my eye, I think. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to get a tickle on your eyelash. Stop, stop, stop. Okay. Um, I think we've straightened our camera out. So let's add a keyframe here uh, for the camera. Let's play back through our timeline. Don't like what it's looking at there either. It's just a boring part of the ceiling, basically. Um, I'd rather it was facing in the opposite direction, to be honest, when the camera is there. So, I'm just going to again go to about the halfway point. Let's move it back a little bit. And let's rotate the camera again when it's in this position. I'm going to rotate it the opposite way, so we're looking more at the wall. The painting. The painting will make a nice um, visual for our camera, so let's set a keyframe here. Just got to be careful I don't do too many wild camera swings. It'll make people sick watching it. So here to here. We're not worrying about the clipping on the stairwell just yet. I'll fix that in a minute. When we look at the painting. And as the camera turns around. 
and we finish at the base of the chandelier. So now we have to fix the clippings through the actual stairwell. Mm, we might pick that up tomorrow. Let's do a save all. So when I come back tomorrow, we can finish cleaning up this camera and we can work on the upstairs. Um, Johan says, has anyone heard of Daniel Figger? He's the lead environment artist at Bungie. I'm looking at his art station and he does some amazing stuff with Substance Designer. I haven't heard of him. It doesn't surprise me. There's a lot of amazing artists that, in the world. <laughs> uh, but no, I haven't heard of him. He works at Bungie though. I'm sure he's great. I'll have to check him out. Um, Substance Designer. I use Substance Painter for this project. I, I played with Substance Designer, but I don't use it very much. It can get quite complicated. I haven't heard of him either, as Android Lust says. Yeah, no, I haven't heard of him. Um, I think we may leave things there for today, though, guys and girls. I want to thank you, though, very much for hanging out with me and for watching. Uh, I do want to thank uh, now Hello, New Hello and Johan for the subscription. That's incredibly good of you guys. Thank you very much for subscribing. Um, I will be back on again tomorrow at 5 p.m. Pacific time in the United States. Remember though, if you're not sure when I'm live, you can look at that countdown in my panels. That's a countdown to when I'm live next in your time zone. Remember too to join the Phil Does 3D Discord server if you haven't already. And uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Phil Does 3D because I always post when I go live. And my schedule never changes. I'm live every Monday, Tuesday, 5 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. And on Friday and Saturday at 2 p.m. Pacific in the U.S. is when the catch-up streams run. No problems. Thank you, Sniper Reckon. I will look him up, Johan, as well after the stream and check him out, check his work out. Um, you guys and girls, take care. Again, thanks for hanging out with me and watching. I'll be back on again tomorrow, 5 p.m. Pacific time. Hopefully, I'll see you guys and girls then. See ya.